Like Welcome, friends, <laughs> to our Easter sunrise service. You're all up very early. Who's awake yet? <laughs> we got some early birds. I am not one of them. But let's wake up anyway with our call to worship. You may stand if you're able, or you can see this. Good morning. That was the next Yeah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Look, look, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Will you join me in singing our first hymn? dark while it was still night while she thought death held sway while she grieved while she wept while it was still dark resurrection began you had not imagined that something so empty could fill you to overflowing and now you carry the knowledge like an awful treasure or like a child that curls itself within your heart how the emptiness will bear forth a new world you cannot fathom but on whose edge you stay. So why do you linger? You have seen, and so you are already blessed. You have been seen, and so you are the blessing. There is no other word you need. There is simply to go and tell. There is simply to begin. Will you sing with me? You may remain seated, and let's sing our next hymn.
God said, let there be light. Yes, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning. The first day. Let's sing with this, this little guy, and with each other, our next hymn. There was a violent earthquake, for the Lord had come down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They came to him, clasped, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid, but go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Thank you. 
Easter. He is risen. He is he risen, is risen indeed. indeed. What more can I say that the earth around us isn't already shouting in praise and thanksgiving? What could I add to this beautiful symphony that we have everywhere we look and listen? A world made by a God that was always destined to beat death. Maybe beat is too strong a word or too inaccurate a word for what God has done. God has created a world in which death is an ally to life, subservient to life's needs. A rotting pile of compost can become a lush green garden. A pile of sticks and branches in the desert can bloom into a field of orange, purple, yellow, and white with just enough rainfall. The sun rises new each morning. And all of these are but an echo of that ultimate dance of life and death. A cross leads to resurrection. A tomb opens for a savior to walk out. The hungry soil of the earth gives up the nourishing gift of Christ's body, gives it back to us so that we might know what it means to live in a world where life and not death have the final say. In the beginning, there was nothing in the beginning, there was darkness. In the beginning, there was death. There was the empty face of the abyss. But not only that, not only was there emptiness and darkness and death, in the beginning, there was God. And for God, the emptiness of the grave is simply the protective womb out of which new life is born. The darkness of the soil, the darkness is the soil in which the seeds of light can be planted to spring forth into glorious day. Death is merely the raw material from which life is made, the creative space out of which all life arises. So arise, shine, for your light has come. You are in the hands of a God who dances on the face of death, a God who walks out of the tomb as if he's leaving the home of an old friend, a God for whom there is no darkness, for even darkness is as light to him. Arise, shine for your light has come because when god speaks life springs up when god speaks the dead hear their name and rise arise shine for he is risen he is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed arise and shine and, and come to this table and see what god has done this week before we have our our uh, communion together. Let's sing Up From the Grave He Arose. Let's stand for this one. I feel like you need to stand for this one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
to see what God has done new this morning. God, we give you thanks that in the beginning you turned darkness into light. You turned emptiness into a world teeming with life. You turned silence into the sound of your voice, calling creation forth from the abyss, inviting us to take our place, dancing with death so that life could be born. Not content with mere symbols, with metaphors of life and death, you did something more. You came to this earth as Jesus Christ, born out of a virgin's empty womb and born again out of an empty tomb that held his body for two days. In his life, death, and resurrection, he showed us the power of your word. Where your word goes, life follows. I just realized that. Way. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> and so, we, like Jesus' first disciples, we sit at this table. We share this bread 